Hello, in this video I'll be explaining how we can use an oscilloscope to measure the uh, frequency and the amplitude of a wave generated in this case by this signal generator. So when you look at an oscilloscope you'll see an array of, uh, of dials that you can turn and the most important ones are these two down here. This one controls the x-axis, that is the time base, so it tells you how many microseconds or milliseconds that each uh, centimetre going across represents. And this part represents the y-axis, so how many volts or millivolts each um, centimetre on the y-axis represents. When you first connect your signal generator, you may be faced with a, a signal that looks something like this. It doesn't quite fit on the screen, so we can adjust these dials to change that. So that's expanded the, the wave a little bit, and by turning the voltage down here, we can reduce that to 10. So now we know that our wave that's on the screen here, each centimetre going across on the x-axis represents 10 microseconds of time, and each cent centimetre going up represents 10 volts, 10 millivolts, sorry. So we can use this information to determine some of the properties of the wave. So to start with, let's work out the um, amplitude of the wave. We know that vertically each centimetre represents 10 millivolts, so if we can shift our wave around here to allow us to more easily measure that. So if we position our wave so the bottom is touching that line and the top is up here, we can see that that's one centimetre, two centimetres, around about 2.8, maybe, yeah, 2.8 centimetres. So 2.8 multiplied by 10 millivolts will give us 28 millivolts. Now we can do a similar trick to work out the time period and therefore the frequency. So to do that we can shift the wave down so we're touching our axis here, positioning the wave just in the centre there. So one centimetre, two centimetres, three centimetres, 3.4 centimetres. So 3.4 times 10 microseconds gives us 34 microseconds as our time period. So we can use that information to work out the frequency. So we know that the time period is 3.4 times 10 to the minus 5 seconds. The frequency, 1 divided by that time period, which will give us 29.4 kilohertz, 29,400 hertz. How does that compare to what the signal generator claims to be producing? Well, if we look at our signal generator here, the dial is turned to A, which is measuring between 4 and 50,000 cycles per second, so that's between 4 and 50 kilohertz. So we're certainly on the right scale because we said 29.4 kilohertz. And if we look at the scale, we can see we're on 30. So the signal generator says we're producing 30,000 hertz. According to our measurements on the oscilloscope, we have 29.4 thousand hertz, 29.4 kilohertz, so it's pretty accurate. Thank you for watching this video from Cowan Physics. If you found it useful, please like, subscribe, and visit cowanphysics.com.